on today's World Insight. The first Golden Panda International Cultural Forum takes place in Chengdu. We interview world-renowned filmmakers in our panel, Director's Chair, with the theme, Movie Image, Between Past and Future. Our guests include Chinese film director Wu Shan, Oscar-winning visual effects supervisor Douglas Han Smith, Oscar-winning documentary filmmaker Malcolm Clark, film director and producer Rob Minkoff, Secretary General of the Musicians Federation of India Kishore Jawade, and President of the Light Chaser Animation Studios Yu Zhou. You know, to translate mutual understanding among civilizations into movies, how are you doing it? Maybe one of the most important questions is, what do you consider as the most important cultural element? For example, from China. One of the reasons why Chang'an has been such a success is that the poetry and culture of the Tang Dynasty are cherished in the hearts of everyone. Every Chinese person or person who grew up with Chinese culture will love Tang Dynasty poetry. It is one of the most important reasons to explain the film's popularity. What I heard that actually you had a lot of interaction with the English subtitle of this film. Our translator of Chang'an is Linda Jivin. She is a very good sinologist. In fact, the translation of Chang'an is pretty difficult, since the translation of Chinese poetry is cross-linguistic. It's very difficult. Let me recite a poem from the Tang Dynasty. Moonlight at the foot of my bed appears to me like frost. Lifting my head, I behold the moon. Lower in edge, I think of home. Why would you like to translate, you know, the very ancient Chinese myths into movies? Why is this so dear to your heart? My latest film is the first installment of the Creation of Gods trilogy. We released the first film this summer. Our trilogy is adapted from one of the most famous novels called Feng Shen Yan Yi. It is also adapted from a painting collection from the Song and Yuan dynasties. It was a childhood dream of mine to adapt this story into film, because every Chinese person has heard of this myth and legend, and everyone has their own image of the world of Feng Shen. Therefore, as a modern era filmmaker, I want to interpret this myth of ancient China through the most advanced filmmaking technologies. And actually, the story is a combination of stories based on reality, with some legends and myths created by our ancestors mixed in. There is a rich treasure trove of content that we can explore. It embodies a lot of emotions and meanings for the Chinese civilization. Therefore, I think for a filmmaker, making an epic film is a dream come true. Welcome. I think you are choosing very ordinary people's lives in China as the most important cultural element of China to present it to the rest of the world. I feel 
sure, because China is under siege politically right now, and because so many people fear China without any real substance or, or, or a reality of a threat, they fear it because they do not understand it. I feel the most powerful way we can communicate to people who have skepticism about the renaissance of modern China is to show them not that gods or mythical characters are the same as them, but that the ordinary Chinese people are just like ordinary citizens of France or Canada or the United States or somewhere in South America. Chinese people want exactly what we want in the West. They want a better life. They want a secure environment. They want to love and cherish their children. They want their children to have a better life than they have had. And I think every adult in the room can agree upon that. So what I try to do is not to mythologize China, but to demythologize China, to tell the truth without bias, without propaganda, just to show the fact that the Chinese people have hopes, they have dreams, they also have fears, and they make mistakes. They are, in fact, in all aspects, human. And I think if we can do that, and we can tell it in an honest, non-propagandistic way, we can just tell the truth about China, we can help China, and by helping China, we help the rest of the world, because we do need to bring people together in a dialogue, because mm -hmm. the planet is in a mess, and if we don't work together, we cannot solve the mess. You know, how we, would we choose the most brilliant part of our cultural elements and present it to our people and also beyond the borders? What is the best way to do it? I really would love to hear from some of you again. I worked on a movie, uh, Shulong Zhu, uh, as the first thing. And uh, it, it started with an education about the Bagua. And then, um, with the beginning of um, uh, the Feng Sheng movies, we did a cultural tour and of, of uh, museums and some uh, temples in uh, central China. It was one of the more educational, fun, and fantastic things I've done. I've never had this opportunity before to uh, enter a different culture and uh, start to understand the depth of what I was getting into. And what is the depth you are getting into? Yes, thousands of years of history and also the development of technology. So the Shang Dynasty was really at the beginning of um, very simple technology. So there's almost no organic material left from the uh, Shang Dynasty. It's all uh, the beginning of metal, uh, stonework, and uh, other things that can't uh, dissolve. And to understand how uh, where Sean was going to tell the story uh, was, was um, a journey for me. And it, it is reflected in uh, the whole creative process of the movie because he took a crew with him, the, the art department. Uh, even though I was the only Westerner on the trip, um, the Chinese crew also learned uh, about the depth of their, their own history. And so I was just getting the surface of it. They were getting the depth of it. And I understood when I saw the movie where all the designs were coming from. I knew what was guiding us. Furthermore, as I got into the story, uh, I knew very little about uh, even Feng Shen Bang. And, um, and surprise to me, there had been other Feng Shen Bangs made. And, and um, that's how uh, sort of ignorant I was of this process. And I looked at those and I saw, well, they're being treated very lightly. And Wu Shan wanted to go down deep. And he also uh, communicated with me that he wanted to, to uh, carry on this culture. 
and make it accessible to uh, today's people. Otherwise, it is slowly like drifting away and getting sort of corrupted by uh, people trying to sell food and everything else. So um, this is a, a return, and it took, he took me with him on this journey. And also, let me go to Mr. Javad from India. Mr. Javad, you are not only doing movies, but also music as well. Well, many here in China, we know Bollywood and also a lot of wonderful music from India. How do you see the most important cultural elements in your culture and also in that of China, as the two cultures are very much linked? Both countries have the rich culture heritage. The countries have the great cultural history. The Chinese instruments, like the pipa, are the home plugs for the Indian instrument, also instruments like the duklimar. Duklimar sound similar for the Indian santur. Iru, iru another instrument, the similar to Indian violin. We can the, conduct the workshop on these instruments between the, both the countries that we allow the artists and even common people to know more about this instrument. From the 2012, we have the, been engaged to organize India-China Silk Road music concert. China India Silk Road Music Festival and China India Silk Road Music Concert. This will allow the musicians of the, both the countries to reach the more audience. I know that you have a lot to share in terms of music with all of us. <laughs> Images may appear to be identical, but looks can be deceiving. The difference is not always obvious. It has to be discovered. There are always different sides to a story. We put the focus on the details. To see more, to understand better. CGTN. See the difference. The world is changing fast, taking all our lives with it. But we can change it too, by seeking answers to problems through discussions and debates. On World Insight, I ask direct questions to real people in the know, seek genuine answers, but respect diverse perspectives. Our live global debates tackle the most critical issues head on. World Insight with Tian Wei, go beyond the headlines. New technologies, AI, artificial intelligence, these are amazing. So how is it really helping us? How much will it help us to connect with the young audience and today's moviegoers? Uh, that is another thing that's very important, I think, in our discussion. Well, it's interesting because my, my life has really been impacted in a very direct way, as all of ours are. But um, when I, uh, I was actually born in a place in the world which is considered the, the cradle of technology, or at least uh, computer technology, which, uh, which is Palo Alto, California. Uh, I'm sure some of you or many of you uh, know it as Silicon Valley. Uh, but when I was a child, uh, the, the computer industry was actually uh, yet to emerge. And I, uh, of course, uh, b being a child, loved uh, watching films, loved watching television, loved, uh, uh, you know, seeing the stories that were shared with me, uh, and animation became a particular uh, favorite of mine. Uh, and so, at the time that I began my career, uh, animation was done in, in a traditional way. Uh, it was done with drawing, and so, of course, all of us as artists in this uh, medium had to learn the most basic uh, techniques, which were techniques that have been used for hundreds, if not thousands, or even, you know, millennia. Uh, and in fact, there was an image in one of the films earlier where there was uh, cavemen 
in a cave and they were showing how the first stories were being told by drawing pictures on the cave wall. And so what you realize is that the very first storytellers were animators. They were, they were people that were bringing stories to life by showing representations of animals. And of course, the animals did not look exactly like the animals, but you could tell what they were because they were symbols. So I really wonder, as a movie maker, you yourself was involved in the epic The Lion King. And today, it is still one of the most popular and biggest box office earner in the world in terms of cartoon. But today, it's very different. Right, the technology. So, what would you think can be created if you had tools that you have today, back then? <clears throat> well, a I dream mean, or two that you haven't realized maybe can be realized today. I mean, the, the well, the, the the biggest technology that 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 is set to revolutionize everything is artificial intelligence, um, and the fact that you can now go and give a word, a, a verbal prompt, and then create a, an image, a unique image. Or, or music, or, or, uh, or more, uh, is, is really set to absolutely transform the, the process of what you can make. So, so literally anyone will be able to actually prompt something and get something back. And so I know that's caused tremendous anxiety among people who, uh, who do what I do and who have worked long and hard to become professionals <laughs> and uh, raise our own levels of skill. <laughs> Uh, and then suddenly to sit in front of a computer and, and say, say a few magic words and receive something back that's remarkable uh, is both awesome and terrifying. CG, uh, AIGC is a, such a hot topic. Almost every forum will talk about it. But to be honest, I'm not a strong believer that CG, uh, a AI can uh, replace us now. Probably in five to 10 years, they can do some of the work we are doing. Uh, because uh, human mind or human emotion, I, th I think they are the most, most uh, complicated thing in the world. And also, in at the same time, we are, we are changing. Different generation, different values. Uh, we have something in common, which is, uh, which is uh, lasting, like uh, love, courage, love for country, for family, uh, integrity. This all will not change. And also, a story repeats. Uh, this, if we can, uh, like a Life King, your story of, of Shakespeare, and uh, so many stories, but uh, storytelling can always be different. Uh, I think that's what, what we believe. That's why we are making story based on the Chinese tr traditional character stories. But the way like we, we told the story of Li Bai is very different from the previous textbook. So 10 years for, for us is a milestone, but we are, we are just a beginner. We'll keep learning from uh, uh, you guys who have done, done this for generations. But also, we are trying to bring new things, uh, new generation, new audience, not only in China, but overseas, globally. Uh, that's what we, what we think. Thank you. Mr. Warshan, Mr. Smith, you have been thinking a lot about it, isn't it, while you are making the movie, Creation of the God? So, uh, the, uh, yeah, the demands of making this ancient story uh, with, um, uh, characters from the immortal world uh, are very complex in some ways and the, the complexity of that is when uh, a real life person has to interact with this uh, imaginary immortal and uh, you have to bring reality into real life and it's like the idea of um, uh, of a, of a self-drive car even you have all the software and what's the problem um, this car is going to uh, drive itself. You know, it's like six or seven years ago, everybody was making auto drive cars and it's, it's turned out to be really hard. So in making our movie, one of the things we had to do was we had to have um, 
these creatures that are created in a computer actually holding real humans or doing things uh, that interacted with humans. And it is a complex process. And the other process is, is software, when it makes a mistake, the computer stops. But software driving motors holding people could kill somebody. So this is an ongoing problem with even shooting a motion picture. So we had to um, organize months and, uh, you know, long in advance to get uh, a system for figuring out how do immortal characters move and figure that out, how do immortal characters work with humans, and then apply that to machinery uh, driven by computers to hold those humans and uh, make them interact so we could put all those images together and we had to make them interact in a way that we had very famous people um, sitting on machinery that didn't hurt them. 呃,因为电影创作本身是依据于技术的,因为电影的发明是因为... Uh, Filmmaking is based on technology. The invention of cinema originated from a version of new technology. While making films, we have to absorb different technologies for our film. In terms of CG technology, it was unprecedentedly challenging because it's a Chinese epic, a myth. There are so many CG characters which do not exist. In reality, for example, Lei Zhenzi and Mo Qilin and Tao Tie, a lot of ancient Chinese creatures, we have to rely on CG technology. And those characters will interact with our actors. This is really challenging. It's more difficult than virtual productions or blue or green screens. It's even more difficult. This time with Mr. Smith, we need to figure out that we need to create those CG characters with Chinese characteristics. I invited Douglas to visit Chinese temples and museums, and we found elements that we can adapt into our story from Yin Shang, which are ink paintings from the Yuan and Ming dynasties. These serve as the inspiration and foundation for CG characters in our film. At the same time, Chinese elements are more decorative. So if we want to merge these developments into our CG technology, we have to be innovative. For example, Mo Qilin and Lei Zhenzi, they look really wonderful on paper. However, if we materialize them in CG characters, then we have to make more changes and they have to interact with actors. So they cannot look more cartoonish. We have to adapt a very strict science and logic to create these characters. And most of the members of the art department are from the US and Canada. So we need to talk to them. We need to help them understand the traditional Chinese culture. For example, what are the eating habits of these creatures? Which species do they belong to? Like Mo Qilin, we have a lot of images for Qilin, but for Douglas, it's a very strange creature. It has a lion's head, but with scales on its body. It has cow's feet. So it's very strange to Westerners. But for Chinese people, we don't need exposition. This is just a creature from the myth. There are so many changes in the world. A lot of changes make our life unpredictable, uh, in a good way and also in a challenging way. Uh, whether it's politics, economy, technologies. As movie makers yourself, with the earnest of trying to do mutual understanding and uh, among uh, uh, civilizations uh, exchanges, what do you think is the priority? What kind of thing you can hold on to and make it happen, in order to make it happen? We all were born into a culture that we all had to experience for the first time and learn about. And, and then expanding from there, had to explore, learn, discover other cultures. Um, and so I think it's, it's all of our responsibility to do what we can to learn, not, not only about who we are, but who, who everyone is. Chinese artists follow cultural intuitions and cultural organizations along with their the counterparts for the different parts of the world must be allowed to same together. This can lead to fusion of ideas, style of technicians, and resulting in innovating and the unique 
artist creations. But by now, I think what is more, most urgent is to wish we should be more open and uh, to listen, to see, and to think. And I'm very happy next month I'll be going to with that China film dele delegation to, to, to Japan and, and then North America also to bring Chang'an uh, to the audience uh, uh, locally. Uh, so I, I think uh, uh, mutual understanding, uh, trust need to be built and uh, all re uh, rebuilt. And uh, the mall should be, the door should be open. We all agree that we, we are all more the same than we are different. We can celebrate the differences. We don't need to criticize the differences. Film is about conflict on one level. You cannot have a good film if you do not have conflict. People have to agree and they have to disagree. There has to be friction between characters. It is a problem with the uh, modern technology and social media, how um, in the absence of information, other information gets inserted. And uh, social media doesn't care whether it's true or not, or whether there's a good goal or not, but it is being used by uh, people to uh, drive mm. things, people apart and countries apart. Uh, yes, I think cooperation and innovation are the most important ones. For example, like the creation of the gods, is really a representative work because we have colleagues from 21 countries around the world. So this is a big collaboration of filmmakers from 21 countries. And we work together to create this beautiful story of a Chinese legend. We are making one project together already, over the past hour. With that, we're coming to the end of uh, this uh, session, which is called Director's Chair. We're so honored for the very first uh, Golden Panda International Cultural Forum. We're having all of you on the stage with us. Tremendous thanks and great appreciation. All the best to your future works.